Hello and welcome to this episode of Slow Mo Media Mondays. This time, we are on the east side of the Salton Sea. The Salton Sea was the largest body of water in all of California back in the prehistoric times. The area was once part of a vast inland sea that covered a large area of Southern California for an estimated 5 million or so years. It was fed by the Colorado River until it eventually diverted itself and dried up. The first mention of the area in recent history was in a railroad survey performed in 1855. The railroad map called it the Valley of the Ancient Lake. Salt Creek became the first area put on the map thanks to a salt mine and became a railroad stop that officially got put on the map in 1900, named the Salton Station. The area would fill with water every few hundred years or so due to heavy rains and river overflows, but would mostly dry up thanks to being in the middle of the desert. But in 1900, the California Development Company began construction of irrigation canals to divert water from the Colorado River into the Salton Sink, the dry lake bed. After construction of these irrigation canals, the Salton Sink became a fertile farmland for a time, allowing farmers to plant crops. But within two years, the Imperial Canal became filling with silt from the Colorado River. Engineers tried to alleviate the blockage to no avail. And in 1905, heavy rainfall and snowmelt caused the Colorado River to swell, overrunning the third intake cut to the bank of the river and sending the flood into the Alamo Canal. The resulting flood poured down the canal and down two former dry arroyos or creeks called the New River in the west and the Alamo River in the east, each about 60 miles or 90 kilometers long. Over about two years, these two newly created rivers carried the entire volume of the Colorado River into the Salton Sink. So, thanks to what some have called the biggest environmental disaster in California's history, the Salton Sea was created. By the 1950s, people started to develop the newly recreated desert beach and started making resorts in other places like the Salton City, Salton Sea Beach, and Desert Shores on the West Shore, and Desert Beach, North Shore, and Bombay Beach built on the eastern shore. They even seeded the sea with fish like the red belly tilapia, thread fin shad, carp, red china, channel catfish, white catfish, largemouth bass, mosquito catfish, sailfin molly, and the vulnerable desert pupfish. All these things combined also made it the crown jewel of avian biodiversity according to Dr. Milt, who has documented over 400 avian species, including 30% of the world's remaining population of the American white pelican. Sadly, due to the stop of the fresh water from the Colorado River, runoff water from farming irrigation, and the ancient salt deposits, it has turned the water's salinity levels unhabitable for most life. If that wasn't enough, the problem is compounded yearly by the natural evaporation of the water from the hot desert summer. And in 2003, the Imperial Irrigation District thought it was a good idea to sell a portion of its water allotment from the Colorado River for 45 years to the San Diego County Water Authorities instead of using the water for the restoration of the Salton Sea's ecosystem and the protection of the wildlife now dependent on that ecosystem. The Salton Sea has since been in decline, but it hasn't been any less interesting to me. 
There are ghost towns, perplexing ruins, interesting art scattered all around the area just to stumble upon. You can see the Salton Sea in movies like On the Edge, Small White House, and the most recent American independent drama, Desert Shores, as well as a music video from the song In the Closet by Michael Jackson. But despite the blazing hot temperatures, dead fishy smell, and quickly disappearing water, the Salton Sea is still home to many, still clinging to that desert oasis. From the Fountain of Youth spa that we stayed at for the night, to the small city of Nyland, to the last free city in the nation, Slab City, a squatter city which deserves an episode of its own in the near future, as well as the yearly music festival, Coachella. And as always guys, here is a little bit of music for your listening pleasure. Here is Invincible by The Orcas. Oh